we're about two months into the quarantine. As many of the big cities in the country start to open up and reopen, the biggest concern for everyone, and rightly so, is how do we do so and get back to work safely? And so today I'm going to talk to you guys about the testings that are out there to help you discuss and understand some of the debate and concerns that a lot of medical professionals like myself have regarding testing and what it means about who can go back to work. I'm Dr. Eileen Shi, local pediatrician in Las Vegas at Siena Pediatrics, and I'm also the founder of FitMed. Here, I'm here to discuss with you commonly discussed topics, relevant ones to us in our community to help us navigate this confusing world of medical science and health, one topic at a time. So the biggest concern and discussion in getting back to work and testing, you might have heard of antibody testing for coronavirus or COVID. I wanna to talk to you guys about three different kinds of testing. The first testing is the diagnostic testing. What I mean by this is when you're doing a diagnostic testing, you're checking for the actual presence of the virus inside the body. So when you have this test, it's a diagnosis. Yes, you have the infection. Number two is antibody testing. This is a serology test, usually done through blood samples, blood drawn, to look for the genetic material of the virus in our blood. This can tell us that we have had infection in the recent past or have had it a few months back. So that's the antibody testing. The third testing is antigen testing. Antigen testing, guys, think about this as when you go to see your doctor, they swap the throat for example, strep, rapid strep test. That is to check for a molecule that's consistently displayed by a virus or microorganism. So when you have that, you're testing positive. It shows that it's a quick way to screen that you have that infection. Let's go in order. Number one, the diagnostic testing that is the most reliable test for whether you have an infection or not at the current moment is the PCR test. PCR stands for polymerase reaction, chain reaction. So what this test usually does, it draws a sample usually from your saliva or through your nasal mucosa. We usually call it the brain teaser because it's so deep to get a bit of that virus that's sitting inside your body. There's so little material, so usually what we do, the scientists or the laboratories, when they receive the sample, they put it through a machine called the PCR, and it amplifies that DNA or RNA so that we're able to detect the virus that's in the host, which is the person being tested. It's a diagnostic testing because being positive, testing positive with the PCR testing shows that you have an active infection. Number two, one of the most highly debated is antibody testing. So the idea of vaccines give people immunity is that when you take a vaccination, your body's immune system uh, mounts a response to build the antibodies to fight back in case you're ever exposed to the microorganism again in the future. Now, we can test for antibodies, whether there are certain antibodies in a person that show symptoms or not. And let's say Sally has never had any symptoms, but she tests the positive for antibodies. So she has IgG, immunoglobulin goblin G, which means that she's had a recent or past infection to coronavirus. Now that means presumably Sally should have some immune, innate immunity against having that infection again. The hard and sticky point here is that we don't actually know how much antibodies your body needs to make or have to show an ability to prevent another infection. In fact, this kind of knowledge, whether you know how much antibodies you need to make to make you uh, immune to having another infection may take years to develop for us to have the data to know for sure. So somebody who tests positive may think that they are immune because they already have had infection in the past. They'll go out into the workforce and the problem is what if they get sick? And also a lot of the testings and a lot of companies are selling antibody test kits and that are not highly regulated and they actually are not always accurate. So these tests have a lot of a false positive. That means they test positive for immunity. So the person thinks that they're safe to go out and they catch the virus and get sick. And that's something we don't want. 
Number three is the antigen testing. So theoretically, if the scientists can isolate a part of the molecule from the virus and be able to make it available like a home kit, like you can do an at-home pregnancy test, right? That's looking for an antigen in your urine sample to show whether you're pregnant or not. Same way, theoretically, if we can do a home kit where you can swap someone's mucosal and can check for whether that molecule from that virus is present, then you have a very quick way to screen um, a whole lot of people, whether they have been exposed to the virus. Problem is we don't actually have a really reliable antigen testing. And that is something that a lot of companies are working furiously to create. So I hope that helps you. The reason I think from my medical point uh, perspective, we don't know and can't fully rely on an antibody test uh, is that we don't really know if your, your test results will show that you're definitely not going to catch the illness again. Or what if um, you test it negative and thinking that you haven't been exposed when in fact you have been exposed and you go out and you can spread it to other people. So the most reliable way to find somebody who has the, t the virus or who is sick, who may show symptoms or not, is a DNA day or PCR RNA test. But again, this test is not always readily available. So we're looking at availability of the testing, the accuracy of the testing, and how widely we can give it across the nation for people to test. I hope that gives you something to think about. It's a lot, I know. Thank you for tuning in. If you have any questions, please leave me messages below and I will get back to you. Take care.